What's the link between daily multivitamin intake and cognitive decline? Well, let's take a look at the results of a very interesting study, the Cosmos Web Ancillary Study, to find out what the link is. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Self Longevity Blueprint. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to aging longevity. There's no hype. There's no gimmicks. We present you with the latest and greatest science to help you make better decisions. So with that, let's dive into this study here. So the first thing is, is this was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, just came out. It is a randomized clinical trial, and that's why I got excited about it. Anytime we see a randomized clinical trial, these are very expensive trials, very difficult to do. And in the field of nutrition, they hold a lot more weight simply because we rely so much on population-based studies. So the details on this study was they had about 3,500 older adults. They were randomly assigned. The first arm, which is the treatment arm, was a daily multivitamin. In this case, they picked Centrum Silver, and the control arm or the placebo arm was the other arm. Now, the study lasted for about three years going on, and their exclusion criteria for being in the study was age. So if you were less than 65 for a female or less than 60 for a male, they didn't include you in the study. If you had a history of an MI or stroke, they didn't include you in the study. If you had a diagnosis of invasive cancer within the last two years, they didn't include you. Now, if you were unwilling to stop taking your current multivitamins or vitamin D or calcium, etc., going on, of course, they wouldn't include you. And they wanted to make sure that you had at least a 75% compliance to make sure you would stick to the study. Anytime you look at a study, there's always going to be what's known as a baseline demographics table. This is a really important table to look at, and it can tell you so much about key differences in the study. So in this particular one, the biggest difference I want you to notice is in the race section where the study is predominantly white. In fact, 93% of the participants in the study are white and everybody else is in the other categories. So what did they do in this testing? Well, they did something called the moderate task. Essentially what it was is they created a learning task. So the participants saw a list of 20 words. Each word was presented one at a time, lasted three seconds, and the instructions were you had to try to remember the words. So the way they tested recall was once the 20 words were presented, they had immediate recall, and then there was a 15-minute delay, and then they had the recall done again to see how the people performed. So what were the findings? Well, performance on the madre after one year of multivitamin intake versus placebo, the multivitamin group started with about 7.1 words recall at baseline, and they increased to 7.81 words. The control group started at 7.21 words, and they increased to 7.65 words. So just a slight increase on the multivitamin group going on. This is a very small difference. The other thing was that in terms of their, you know, we call this fancy accounting, but in terms of their assessment, so they looked at this data and basically they calculated that the effect of taking a daily multivitamin was about equivalent to 3.1 age-related multi-change years going on. So in other words, you were able to reduce your age-related decline by about 3.1 years by consuming a daily multivitamin. So let's get into a little bit of the discussion portion of this. So what is it that you want to take away from this study? First, the overall effect size is small. Now, even though that's the case and everybody will tell you we need more studies, we can't really wait for more studies because by the time they come out, it will be 20, 30 years and who knows where we're all going to be. So you have to make an educated decision based on where you're at. At a population level, even these small changes can translate into significant impacts in overall health. Now, vitamins, the beauty of vitamins is they are inexpensive, they're accessible, there are few side effects as long as they're taken within reason. and because of the fact that all of these things are met, it's easier to consider them as a risk with very low side effects with a potential benefit that's right there to do. So in other words, vitamins could be a simple therapeutic choice to be used. Now, in terms of this particular study, what's interesting is, is this study is showing an immediate improvement or an improvement in immediate recall going on. Why should you care? Because immediate recall, which is controlled by the hippocampus, 
it's part of normal aging. So even if you don't have cognitive decline that could be related to diseases, just part of aging means taking a multivitamin could potentially have a small benefit in terms of slowing that rate down. So some of the strengths and weaknesses of the study, one, large sample size, high compliance, it's scalable in terms of the assessment they did. And importantly, the diets between the two arms were similar. So in other words, it's not like one group is eating one thing, the other group is eating something entirely different. So those are the strengths. On the limitation size is once again, the study is mostly whites. So can you generalize it to other groups? Don't know. It's looking at short-term memory, but really trying to look for longer-term memory and what does that decline look like? But once again, you would really need a study that's lasting years and possibly even decades going on. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about this. And another thing is, is neither group showed a decline in cognition. In fact, both groups got better. The vitamin group actually got better slightly more. So what's the bottom line? What can you take home away from this? It's very simple. If you decide to take a vitamin, the risk versus reward profile does look good in the sense that the risk is small and there is some reward associated with it. There you go. If you want to wait for more studies to come out, there's more studies that are already out showing the benefits of multivitamins. The effect size is once again small. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like it, hit that subscribe button. I would love to hear your questions, comments, and topics for future videos. And as always, if there's an interesting study you find, let me know and I'll be sure to talk about it next time. Thanks, guys.